Uh, from a team perspective, what are the positives uh, from uh, this series? Uh, from the team side, I think the biggest positives are that the amount of youngsters we managed to play in this series because everybody knows that some of the big names were missing from the series and, and it'll be, it's, it's harder for a country especially who doesn't play a lot of cricket. So for me the biggest positive has been the guys like Victor Jola making his debut, Clive Madande, Brad Evans, Tony Manunga, these guys making the debuts and doing well as well. Tony's cameo was quality. Uh, I thought Jola bowled exceptionally well in the three games that he's played. Brad has held his own as well. So there's been a lot of... Clive today showed a, showed a glimpse of class as well. So for me the biggest positives has been the youngsters. And the negatives? None for me. <laughs> negatives? Negatives would have to be that I didn't manage to get runs. But was there any temptation to rest a couple of players? And the, even within the context of there so many uh, senior players missing? Um, all the senior players who are missing are missing through injury. No one has been rested. Let we trying to we trying to bring a, a winning culture in the in the in the change room. And uh, in the past, Zimbabwe hasn't played a lot of games, and we have complained about that. I mean, you've been with us on that journey as well. So now that we're getting games, we didn't think of resting. I personally didn't think of resting. I know the other guys didn't think of resting. So all the senior guys who are missing are missing out through injury, not because we wanted to rest. So all the time we get to hear about the Dave Hilton effect, but we get it from people. We need to understand it coming from a player who is coached by Dave Hilton. How much effect does it have in the pitch and outside the pitch? You have to be in the tenure to understand its value. But uh, what I will give you is the fact that Dave, Dave has done, well it's not a secret, he's done exceptionally well in a very short space of time. Dave has maybe brought that fearless cricket but with some accountability and not reckless and as he rightly pointed out in the changing room today that today we felt like we were slightly on the reckless side um, but apart from that Dave has managed this well he has brought a lot of care, love, respect for the players in the changing room because we have it for Dave Harder anyway but to see a legend of Zimbabwe cricket giving love, time, respect back to players and then speaking to them on one on one I mean it's hard to put it in words, but if you were in the team, you know, you'll understand the value of that man. One last one. Please, one last one. So now, uh, in the last press, you mentioned that um, you focus on the next game. The current game or the previous game does not matter at all. So now we're coming, um, India is coming. With the way you guys were playing throughout the series, not just today, throughout the series, what are your expectations with yourself and the team going into India? Because everyone is talking about how tough off a side is, and probably our winning probability is less. But from the player side, and you were in the pitch. Let me ask you that question. What was our win probability in the qualifiers after oh, Namibia? It was zero percent. <laughs> it wasn't as high. It wasn't as high. And yeah. then we were coming against Bangladesh. What was our win probability? Not high again, isn't it? Yeah, we got to keep the same way going into India. I know you've got the answer. <laughs> oh, Raza, you've had an absolutely fantastic series, and rightly there's been a lot of focus on you. But you spoke about. Uh, the players who made their debuts, I think the four players, I think we've used about 17 players. How important has it been for you to have players around you, even without other senior players coming through and being able to just help the team along? Uh, Titch, I think it's, it's difficult to put it in words. Why? Because if those players hasn't, if those players didn't do what they did, we wouldn't be winning the series. And one man doesn't win cricket games, not, not, not ODI anyway. Um, so those little cameos, the, the unsung hero that I think people are not talking about is actually Luke Jongwe. Every game he's been given the ball in a difficult circumstances is bowled well, and every game he's come on to bat, he's batted well as well. I mean the first ODI, the little cameo from Luke was exceptional. So there's a lot of unsung heroes but the focus, you said is on me, but for me the focus is on the guys who have done well but not getting mentioned. So for me it's Luke, it's Tony, it's Clive today, it's Victor Nauchi. Um, is Bradley that, that double wicket double wicket over today? You know these things break other teams' back. So for me, the focus is those guys, not myself. I just a quick one again. Uh, that tenth wicket partnership, 68 runs from uh, uh, Victor and uh, Richard. Obviously, it wasn't a losing cause, but you know what does that do in terms of uh, speaking to the depth and the improvement that we're seeing across the board? I think before I answer that, what it does for the fans that they kept singing. So the brand of cricket we are trying and we are encouraging to play, like I said, is fearless, aggressive, accountable, not reckless. So it would have been a lot easier for us to close the shop, back all the overs and be 130 for 8. But we didn't want to do that. We are trying to bring a culture in the changing where 
we are believing generally that we can win the game from any position. And to see our number 10 and 11 put a 60 yard partnership is encouraging. I was actually telling the coach, I said, I think you found your new number five, coach. I'm happy to go down. <laughs> Uh, all right, interesting you say that. Um, uh, I'd like to focus a little bit on you right now. Um, I'm, you may have read the press that you've been shortlisted within the Big Bash League and things like that, all because of the form that you've had within the seri series. What does that mean for you and how much of an open door do you think that also gives to some of our players to seek to perform at the kind of level that you've been performing so that they get the same level of opportunity? So my, my biggest advice or one of the advice I shared in the changing room is or sometimes I go extremely hard at these youngsters. Why? Because I come from a very humble beginnings and uh, people don't know my story. And what I can tell you, cricket has given me a better life. I want to make sure that when I hang my boots, I have, I have done every possible thing I can to share my knowledge, to speak good about my youngster when I go overseas, to do those performances on the park so that they can follow, so that they can also have a better life. Cricket gives you that. If you respect the game, you play with integrity and loyalty and you make the right sacrifices for the sport, the sport it was back. And I want to make sure that, or at least I want to give him 100% that I've done everything for those youngsters so that this sport can reward them back as well to have a, to have a decent life. Um, looking at the fact that you are now number four in the world, uh, in, in the all-rounders, uh, uh, the ICC rankings, and then the screaming of the fans out there, what does that do for you personally? Number four? Yeah. Um, that's quite a jump, quickly. So, <clears throat> so uh, during my difficult times, I know where I was. Um, I know at, at one point I was, I was 63 in the world in T20 all around this rank and I, and I wrote that on the wall in my in my cricket room and I looked at that wall pretty much every day and I made a promise so to be where I am yeah it's uh, it's humbling um, still a long way to go I generally believe I honestly believe there's still a long way to go um, but yeah it's, it's nice to be it's nice to be in a good direction let's just, let's just leave it there uh, Raza, uh, I know, I think it was the last year, maybe a year, or maybe longer than that, uh, you had a bit of a health scare uh, with your arm, you weren't sure if you were going to be able to play cricket again. When you look back and reflect on that and see, you know, the adoration you get from your country, uh, the attention you're getting globally, you know, when you refer to that time and you see yourself now, what does that do for you? <clears throat> I think TJ it would be hard to, hard to answer that question because uh, it was a for, for my family and for myself, it was a difficult time. Um, it's true that I didn't. There was a possibility of of me not playing the game again. I remember speaking to the surgeon before my second surgery, and I said, "God forbid, if it is cancer, what are the possibilities?" And he said, "Because it's bone marrow, the, the chemo wouldn't work. We have to amputate your arm." Here I am. What I have to complain about? What more can I say, man? People ask me what is the reason, that is the reason. Why am I doing well? Because I'm, I'm grateful to be alive, to be among my family and among you guys, and uh, still representing my country. Put a smile on my face and I try and do as well as I can. Okay, there is no secret. That's true. Uh, okay, I, I have a follow up to that, but I'll just ask you this. Anyway, uh, how much did your family, obviously coming out from the bubble and so forth, be, out in your performance, are you able to go back to your family, family regularly? And as always, is there any news on the other injured guys and when they might be back, if they might be back for the year? So, Alhamdulillah, glad the bubble is over. So that's good news because I like to play my cricket hard, but leave cricket at the ground. When I go home, I, I'm absolute nobody. I, I am, I'm a son, I'm a father, I'm a brother, and I have relations. So, you know, I, I, I fall on those relations. I'm not a cricketer when I'm home. So Alhamdulillah, the bubble is over. Unfortunately, when we were in the bubble, because you're around cricketers, you're always a cricketer. You, you do not have anything else to do. You just remain a cricketer. And sometimes it's mentally very tiring. So it's nice to go home, and forget about who I am, focus on the other things, and come here fresh. We've got a very good chance of uh, Ryan Craig hopefully be fit for India series. If not the start, then suddenly hopefully the last part of it. But that's up to the medical. I, I like to look at positive things. 
if they think there's a half a chance for me, that's good enough. So when I spoke to them, they said, yeah, there's a chance. I said, that's good enough for me.